welcome First Reconciliation and First Communion families. I was hoping to be able to do this in person, but uh, our scheduling makes it a little bit tough. And I'll look forward to uh, trying to meet up with you each individually. Father Tom, one of us will uh, try to reach out to you um, and, and do a little bit more personal conversation about faith and reconciliation and First Communion. This is an exciting year uh, for your for your student, and, and we really hope it's an exciting year for the whole family when it comes to faith. I would like to start out with just a bit of a prayer first. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. This is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of believers were united, heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possession as everything they held, owned they held in common. The apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord with great power, and they were all accorded great respect. None of the members was ever in want. All those who owned land or houses would sell them, bring the money from the sale of them to present to the apostles. It was then distributed to any who might be in need. The word of the Lord. Be to God. I wanted to think about the Acts of the Apostles um, because our early church is this time period when people would gather in homes out of fear for the government, but also because there were just so few people yet who believed in Christ. They would meet in groups of maybe 20 or 30 people, kind of a so this year we have about 50 kids and their families doing First Reconciliation and First Communion. Um, that would be a good sized church in itself. So I gather, and I'm doing this downstairs in the uh, presentation hall, which is also our cafeteria, as you can probably hear, because gathering around a meal and gathering around the meal is the final gift of this period when your child will be able to receive Christ not only as an intellectual idea but also Jesus within them. What a powerful reality and it changes our lives. So I look forward to um, walking with this through you this with you and, and uh, covering some of the our background information of how we're thinking about God bless, and I look forward to seeing you. In the second part of our presentation today, um, I would like to reflect a little bit upon the idea of, of a catalyst. We have these people that are walking with you and praying for your families, and we call them catalysts for Christ because Jesus was the greatest catalyst of all time. Um, but what what's a ca word catalyst, not cattle, but catalyst. Well, um, this is where we sometimes can learn things from science, where there's an experiment we can do. So this is hydrogen peroxide. It's, so water is H2O2. No, water is H2O. Sorry. Hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. Now, if you leave hydrogen this is hydrogen peroxide, if you leave that exposed to the air, those bubbles, extra bubbles of oxygen are going to start to come off of it really slowly. By probably tomorrow, this hydrogen peroxide will turn into just plain old water and it'll lose its properties. Now, if we wanted to speed that up a little bit, we would, you know, we could, and wanted to see it better, we might use some different, like, food colorings and stuff like that to see the bubbles come off there. Yeah, I was going to use red this time. I was going to put in a couple drops. Here. Maybe that's about five drops. I don't know if it is or not. Uh, food color. And I'm just going to mix that around a little bit. Come on now. It's not really mixing all. It's starting to look a little bit like Gatorade. A Gatorade jar here. I'm using. Maybe I put a little too much in, but 
So it's now, it's a red color, but it's really, you see little bubbles on top, but it's still not coming off very fast. So I could show you this video and just, we could sit here for a day waiting for those bubbles to come off. No, I'm not, I'm too lazy for all that. Okay, I can't wait any longer. I'm gonna see if I can speed this up maybe with a little soap maybe. Would that help any? A little bit of that in. Mix it around again. No, I can't wait any longer. So I am going to take what they call a catalyst. It is plain old yeast. Yeast interacts with the hydrogen peroxide and they tell me that I will get those oxygen bubbles out of there much faster if I pour this in. Let's see here. There we go. Oh, here we go. Here they come. Ah, okay, look at that. Those are all oxygen bubbles coming out in a hurry. Now that I can see happen. And it's going and going and going and going. Look at that go. Okay, now that's a catalyst. Now, God works in our lives in all different ways. And we can avoid God and we can set God aside. It's not very important sometimes. That's, that's reality of life sometimes. But what we wanted to do is make an invitation at this time in your life to um, have, you know, see what happens when I allow God to be a catalyst in my life. Um, and to kind of observe. Is there any difference, right? Um, and so we made an observation here, and you can see that that's still, the bubbles are still coming out of that oxygen. And it's gonna fill my tray here pretty soon. I have to watch out for that. But that is our hope for this time, is that this first reconciliation and first communion can be a catalyst for your family to grow deeper into the knowledge of God who loves us, forgives us, and loves us and saves us through sacrifice. So those are the three pieces that I want to talk about next. Each of you should receive a bag just like this. What's the purpose of this bag? Well, a couple things. We'll keep that in mind over there. This is the bag that you will find out how to experiment with new words and also to um, have all the information. So. In your bag, the first thing that you'll find is a yellow folder. And in this, you will have an observation sheet, just like a scientific study. But you're going to do it about the idea of forgive. It's going to give you an opportunity to draw a picture or write a sentence about the time that you felt Jesus asking you to forgive someone who hurt you. And then the second part is draw a picture or write a sentence about a time that you felt Jesus asking you to ask someone else for forgiveness. Forgiveness is a really important part of life. You know when mom and dad say, I'm, you need to say you're sorry? That's tough sometimes. But saying you're sorry, asking for forgiveness is a really important skill of life. It even goes a little bit deeper with Jesus. Through God, we discover a fundamental reality that the relationship with God is always bigger than the problem. The relationship with God is always bigger than the problem. Sometimes in our lives it's pretty tough to have to live that way. Sometimes it feels like the problems are just bigger than the, than the relationship. We understand that. But Jesus offers us and invites us to reflect upon, not for God, a problem is never bigger than the relationship for God. We need to be strengthened, I think, through that and helped. So parents, that is the overall image of all of our work that we're doing here and why we want you to come together and to pray and, and everything else. Now, the second piece that we want you to think about is the idea of sacrifice. Sacrifice is a big word. Do we ever sacrifice anything? Sometimes, um, you know, you'll hear athletes talking about 
uh, when they were in high school that they sacrificed going out to parties or they sacrificed uh, Saturday mornings early to go practice. Um, and, and they spent a lot of times in practice. Um, those are sacrifices. We recognize that Jesus gave the ultimate sacrifice for us. And he gave up his life for us that we might have life. It's kind of a weird thing to talk about. It's hard to talk about. It's, it's really the best way we found is to experience it. So in your packets, you have an envelope called sacrifice. And it's geared for every um, Sunday. Uh, and it's, um, you can take an envelope and you can carry this envelope around with you during the week and think about what can I sacrifice this week and then put it in the collection at Mass. The, um, uh, we've had a whole range of experiences with this. They've gone from uh, people um, like, you know, they didn't, mom and dad, and, and maybe the kids were gonna stop by and pick up a dessert or something and they decided not to. And they took that same amount of money and put it in, in the envelope and, and sacrificed that snack. Or they, um, the one, one of my favorites is a brother, he has three sisters, and he's, his sacrifice for the week was that he was not gonna fight with his sisters all week long. Um, reports back from mom was that that wasn't quite so successful, but he got it, right? That our natural act sometimes is to fight. And to sacrifice that to keep peace as a way of reflecting. That's, that is when sacrifice starts to make sense, when the good of others gets recognized. So that's the piece on the sacrifice. The third piece in here is your, is your bag. What's your bag here for? Well, your bag is your bag. On the first Sunday of every month, we bring food for the poor. You feed the hungry. It's one of the great acts of loving. Especially when you love someone that you don't even know. This is the anonymous nature of bringing food to church and giving it to people who you don't even encounter. It's not friends or families. You, you may not even know them. It might, but it might be. It might be from friends that need some food or some help. And they go down to St. Vincent de Paul and they have some food. We bring that every Sunday, and or on the first Sunday of every month. And we try to keep St. Vincent de Paul always supplied. Your action of bringing food for that moment is very important. The final part is where you can become a catalyst. Now, first part, is this t-shirt. We ask you to wear it to church, on the, particularly on the first Sundays of the month. All of your shirts will have a 22 on the back because you're gonna have First Communion in 2022, your Team 22 as a whole. And then, um, so just your presence at Mass with these shirts on is a great catalyst of joy for others. You'll have people asking, oh, what's with the shirts? And that our particular older people will, will love that and see that. The last part of though this is becoming a catalyst is this other blue bag. This one is in your bag as well. And at the parish picnic this Sunday, you are invited to come bring this bag and hand it out to someone. We'll introduce you at the end of Mass and we'll ask someone to take it. And then they will start to bring food to on the first Sunday of the month as well. All of a sudden, you see that your smaller bag can be supplemented with a bigger bag by someone else. And you become, help make awareness 
of the needs in our community. So there's more material in here. Some of it is a book and, and background, and Jesse will go through all these things in more detail. But what we hope and pray is that the power of the word sacrifice, the power of the word forgive, and the power of the word love will become more fully part of your life through this sacrament of reconciliation and First Communion. May God bless you and keep you.